We are live on Facebook. We are live to the world. Woohoo! You know, all this technology kind of works my main nerve most of the time, but we did it again. And every day that we're above ground and things are working is like a win. So, hey, everybody, <laughs> as her voice goes really high, um, welcome to Friday Inspiration for Photographers. Uh, today, <laughs> today, I've got a friend of mine who is going to blow your mind. Okay, not not to put any pressure on you, Jenny, really. You, you don't really have to blow everybody's mind. I, I just think you're going to just push naturally. Um, so I just want to jump in here before I do the formal formal with you and tell everyone that um, for those of you who are new to this every Friday for now, for as long as I can, I am doing uh, what I call Friday Inspiration for Photographers. The whole thing started last summer with I just went on this this rant about purpose and why I think it's important and how I think it shapes your photography and your vision and your expression in so many ways. And it can it, and it can appear purpose can be whatever it is for you, but having something that drives you that way totally affects your your results. So it that's started the whole thing. I was on Instagram live and we're now we're doing it uh, on in Zoom on Facebook live. And, uh, and it's been really great. And so the thread that goes through all of them, whether I'm showing post-processing, I like having my friends over and we have little conversations about what they're up to, what they're doing and how they're thinking. And it's been really illuminating and lovely. And, uh, and that's what we're continuing to do. And so this morning, Jenny does, she's going to tell us all about it, EFT tapping. She's a professional violinist. She is amazing. I did a session with her uh, tapping because I knew about EFT, which is emotional freedom techniques. Is that correct? Yeah. And right, 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 right. And well, well, she'll talk about what it does and why we why we want to care. So I have this thing. Those of you who know me uh, know that I talk about artistic voice. I talk about vision. I, I am a professional photographer. I'm a professional Fujifilm X photographer. I just had a big project go out globally. I, I know my photography, but I also know where it comes from. I know where it's the most, I know how to generate it in a way that is the most genuine and the most authentic and the most um, aligned with how I view the world and what I want to say and the, and the legacy that I want to leave. And so along those lines, that doesn't just sort of happen by itself. There are certain decisions, there are certain practices, there's a certain amount of preparation that it takes. And as I always say this, quoting Ansel Adams, the most important part of the camera is the 12 inches behind it. Oh, shocking. So uh, snap that and smoke it. Smoke it. <laughs> and so to that end, I am loving, I'm, I'm meeting wonderful people like Jenny, who's a new friend who are doing the most amazing work in the world, helping performers, because I do feel that photography is large part performance art because there is that moment that it's go time and all the forces have to marshal. It all has to work right then. We work with light and time. That's our medium. So it is completely shaped and affected by what's going on inside. So um, I'm going to I'm not going to talk. I want I me mean, Jenny and I are going to are going to converse. I want to know more about her um, her violin background, and I want her to tell you the story of how all this happened for her, because you might just find a few threads that uh, apply to you as well, and you can use in your life. So, Miss Jenny, gorgeous woman that you are, tell us, tell us, like, how did all this happen for you? I'm so fascinated by this story. Yeah. Okay. So um, long story, but I'll keep it as brief as possible. And first of all, thank you for having me here, Karen. And already, oh my goodness. you know, when we talked the other day and you talked about that, the performance aspect of, um, you know, because I work with a lot of performers and I hadn't thought of photographers as performers in, in that sense. And so well, photographers this is a whole... often don't, and photographers don't often think of it that way either, but I yeah. keep pointing it out. It's like poking a, a wound. I'm <laughs> like, remember this. <laughs> You yeah. wonder why your stuff doesn't turn out. What are you thinking? What do you mean? I'm thinking about my settings. I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> you yeah, just made yeah. my point. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so good. So yeah, for me as a performer, I mean, I'm I'm a violinist, and um, I and you live do, in Madrid. I didn't. I tell do. I live yet. in Madrid. I live in Spain. As you can tell from my voice, I'm not Spanish. I'm English. I do speak Spanish, but with an English accent, unfortunately. <laughs> but never mind. Um, uh, I came here. Well, I went to music college in London, studied with my professor and this can be a long story or it can be a very short one the potted version is that he and I were not a good fit for each other so after three and a half years and I did manage to scrape through my diploma um, I left the violin and I just gave up the violin completely for eight years wow yeah completely I just and I kind of fled the country and that's why I came to Spain and it was a real sensation of um, what am I going to do with my life I didn't want to have anything to do with the violin. It was just a source of m- misery for me after that. And it was a, there was a lot of, yeah, probably a, a lot of grief as well, because this would be my dream since I'd been little to right. be a violinist, be a performer. And I got to the place where I just felt it's, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not, there isn't the, op- there aren't the opportunities out there for me. I need someone to be my kind of mentor and no one's interested, you know, all these kind of thinking that right. so many of us uh, hold. So I came to Spain teaching English, very good in English. So I actually, having said that, I had to learn grammar. I didn't know the first thing about English grammar, but I learned that and taught English. But then after eight years, I came to Madrid. I'd been living in other places in Spain. Uh-huh. And uh and made the kind of cardinal error of going to a concert in the and sitting in the audience and looking at it. And I know this is something that we can all relate to that kind of, I want to be the one doing it. I want to be up on the stage. I want to be, you know, I don't want to be watching other people do it. And, you know, I can oh, imagine. Yeah, I know that. And one. that frustration and that sense of, you know, waste and anger with myself, but also anger with life and you know it's not fair and all the rest of it so I did I found a teacher and I got back into the violin and quite quickly I did start playing again hit this teacher was a whole other you know he was so encouraging and he said immediately you know sort of let's you know start playing again so I got a job it was just a month a gig with his orchestra and and then started playing again and then you know wow. twists and turns I was teaching a lot and that was at the point where I got i I created my studio my violin studio and that was really great for a a a while and then it kind of stopped being so great it got too much I had 60 students at some point at one point I mean it was just mad it was the kind of you know be careful what you wish for kind of you know because I've (laughs) been building it up and and that was the point where I discovered EFT and for me it was that real need an internal need to get back to more performing, to be on the stage, to be able to express myself as a violin. It's not just yep. as a teacher violin, you know, and I still have a couple of violin students, but um, they're adults, they're not four years old. And, um, you know, but and it was a good part of my life. I don't see that as a, a mistake, mm-hmm. doing those different things. They all <coughs> contributed to, to what I have now. But, you know, I kind of think, the, I would say the only mistake that I make sometimes is that, instead of spending maybe a year or two going in different directions, I spent tend to take a decade doing it. And then, so, you know, it's taken a while. See, I have this theory that that's why no, we right. have to stay healthy. That's why we have to stay healthy because Absolutely. we only start getting so really slow. good. Yeah. Well, we only start getting really good at stuff, you know, in like the fifth yeah. and sixth decades. So, you know, now we're just starting. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So I then that this is the point where I discovered emotional freedom techniques, EFT, which is also known as tapping. And I think maybe I should insert a quick, uh, we keep referring to it, what it is um, so that people know, you know, basically, um, I know. Wait, that and I have, I have one more, I have one yeah. more question. Yeah. Go um, on. <laughs> so are you now performing more? Um, Right before COVID, my last job as a violinist was I did two seasons in a musical here in Madrid, which I absolutely loved. I I mean, I've always been an orchestral performer. I was classically trained and I had for long, for several years, I had a violin and guitar duo, um, which I loved as well. That was really good fun. Are there recordings? um, Can people people hear you? I've got a couple of CDs, yeah, which I, I had to do a lot of 
tapping, which we'll get onto to to be able to do them. But you know, um, yeah. So there's there's all these things I did, but the job right before was was a, in a musical, and I realised I just love the variety of people there, and uh, the. I also loved the fact that I was the only violinist. So it was it was a bit more autonomy. It wasn't sort of sitting in an orchestra at the back of it or in a section and having to play and not anyone here, you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. To blend in. So it, it suited me to have my own part and everything. But that was also a kind of tipping point for me as well because I was already coaching. Um, that's kind of backing up a bit. And it kind of gave me permission to start working, in fact, with musicians um yeah I feel like I've jumped over a few years here that's okay that's okay I'm just I'm just uh I, I want I want everyone to kind of like get a sense of like where you are in the scheme of things because yeah. I know what you mean I'm just make, changing a, a setting here I know what you mean about the um really wanting to perform I know that as an actor I mean people many people have heard this story so I'm not going to harp on it but you know it was it was nerves for me that that I wanted to get my acting career off the ground, but I just, I had always had problems with nerves in testing and judging situations. So in figure skating, it was like taking tests, you know, I'd fail them all four times before I'd pass just because I was so freaking nervous. And wow. then, uh, yeah. and then in acting, I had a really hard time with auditions because I get so nervous until I learned some things that flipped it around. And I didn't know about EFT then, yeah. of course that was, that was probably in the eighties or whatever, but I was familiar with EFT from horse training um, oh, wow. because uh, many of the high, high level, high performing sport horses, you know, at kind of the elite end of the spectrum, you know, performed in front of large crowds and a lot of pressure. And sometimes the horses just couldn't take it. So, that, you know, tapping and some other kinds of neurological, you know, mind body things for horses became yeah really important for these, you know, cause these animals cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course the owners love them on top of it and they wanted them to perform well. And That's incredible. so it was really yeah. interesting to see kind of what they, what other modalities they would introduce. It's cross training. It mean on, on a certain level, even though we're talking mind, body, spirit, it is, it is sort of a cross training way of thinking where, you know, a lot of in photography, because we're making the transition now to talking about EFT yeah. and performance and stuff in photography. It's so, it's very technical. It was, um, you know, for a long time dominated by mostly men and, you know, with that focus, you know, that, which is a great thing. I'm not, not knocking it. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a blend of sort of like East and West and male and female and, you know, and, and softer side of Sears and, you know, the, the understanding, but like any dancer or singer or musician or, or performer or athlete of any kind, you do your training so that you are trained to the nth level so that you're not thinking about your technique all the time. That's what we have to do as photographers, get that good. And then what frees the technique to actually then, you know, move and have a life of its own is your ability to then, what would you say, direct it or be this present? This reminds in me of, you know, the, the four levels of learning and they took, a, which I've been just, you know, thinking about the other uh, recently, this idea of moving from unconscious incompetence, which, you know, as a violinist, that goes on for quite oh God, a my teacher. My teacher yeah. taught me this too 30 years ago. Yeah, I love amazing. this. I love that you're talking and, about this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then you just... move up to the conscious incompetence. And then eventually, with a bit of work, uh, moving up to conscious, com yeah, conscious competence. And I would say, as a violinist, and presumably as a, as a, a photographer as well, and correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, that conscious competence is all about the technique and, and about the, I'm thinking about when we're in practice mode and why is this not working? What do I have to do here? And then, but then for performance mode and those moments, that's when we have to level up to the unconscious competence and to that, where it just, think, and it isn't so much yeah. unconscious you're just not thinking about it it's just there well for you. It, it's unconscious in the sense that it's just take it's like driving a car and you get from a to b and you oh my god i have no idea how i got here but it's so unconscious that it's just automatic and so you can be in the flow you can be 
doing other things. So as an orchestral player, there's so much to be doing. You know, you're you're playing your part, but you're also watching the conduct the director. You're making sure your sound blends and everything. But it, on an unconscious level, all the things are working underneath. And and that I think is is certainly as a musician, we don't get enough training in that flipping that switch and so it you know you're talking about audition settings or something like that mm-hmm. right. we're still on the conscious bit and it's and so we get very self-conscious as well and right. so and that's the the part which is is hard to access as well mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. exactly and oh this is so good because this is yeah, this is the flip this is the leap that um more and more yeah. photographers are realizing that they need to take i'm just getting ready to start my um my six week, you know, artist voice training online yeah. that we used yeah. that we've done as retreats. And this is, this is what we're, I was just making my notes this morning because our first official class is on Monday. And this yeah. is the stuff I want to bake into or that I do bake into, but this is like my, the best opportunity, the best class for really baking this into um, people's uh, process so yeah. that you walk away with, okay, you know, you know, like, if this failed, if this image failed, did I mess up a setting? It doesn't take long to figure out, you know, is it a setting? Is it a position or whatever? Um, but to use, to get that so that it's driven by, you know, the feeling and the presence and the understanding of what it is you're actually trying to create just as a musician is listening and blending and watching and, you know, and being getting, you know, your own feeling into your work. It's, it's exactly the same. And this is the, this is the part that I think is so cool. Cause when I coached voice for 25 years, TV, you know, to uh, broadcast news people, um, I realized that it's the same, you know, the, the, the groundwork is the same, no matter the output we're human. If it, if we're doing anything expressive or athletic, it, it all has to line up and it all the neurological the um what would we call it the the physical mental spiritual physical neurological pulmonary it all has to go click and that's the zone mm-hmm. and and when we're out in nature like us landscape photographers especially we get out in nature and a sense of awe overtakes and it kind of flips you there in an instant by itself but there are th- things we can do to kind of you know, stack the deck in our favor so that we have that sense of presence um, all the time at will. Absolutely. Carry on. Absolutely. I yeah, just no, to no, I love tying that. this back and, to. And, yeah, no, and tying it back to, you know, one thing I've, I'm working with EFT, and there's one, one, if people are not getting there, there is, you know, and, and it's very easy. I find that people, you know, it's very easy to kind of beat yourself up a little bit on this and go, oh, you know, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this and everything? Right. Um, but, uh, and, or there's a kind of, yeah. The, I call it the kind of, I suck syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> I suck. I suck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever your words are for it. We'll go back yeah, to the yeah. language, you know, as before. Uh-huh. But, yeah. And, but I, I, you know, working with lots of different people and there's what I call, I, I say you've been swiped because there's this um, acronym, which is SWIPD, which is the five areas of resistance that we have. I don't know if you know about this, Karen. It's, I it's do a so little bit, but I really, I yeah. really, I really I want to I put it in this it. order because to make a, a this. word out of it. So, you know, the whole idea that we resist for a reason, you know, people say to me often, oh, I'm so lazy. And I just say, ah. Uh, Maybe you've got more resistance, you know, you've got resistance coming up here or there's more underlying, um, you know, programming or beliefs underlying, which is stopping right. you. So the, right. the swipe thing is S is for safety. So any kind of feeling of, you know, that shining and showing up as your best self. Most of us have got this kind of programming as we're growing up of, you know, don't show off. Don't right don't you know that in Australia they call it the tall poppy syndrome you know and and if you're sticking out you get your head lopped off kind of thing but I think most cultures have a a variety a variety of this and their own ways of expressing this 
Um, so there's the safety, you know, other people won't like it. I was told when I was a child that, you know, you've got to don't be. Yeah, exactly. I'm reading what Douglas is putting yeah. the with this stuff. You can't be in the zone all the time. Absolutely. No, you can't. And Absolutely. you shouldn't, but you should have a, my thing, my, my contention is we need, we have these moments when we need to be in the zone. And so why not have a way to get yeah. there instead of going out and hoping you are, and then you're not because you're just don't, you're, I don't know, whatever. It's this mysterious process where instead we can have various and sundry tools to help yeah, get us there absolutely. when we need to be. Absolutely. Ebb and yeah. flow. Yeah. Absolutely. Love it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, this, shall I just whiz through it through and not leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. And I, no, it's fine. I'm just riffing away on this. But, but you know, the yeah. next one is, is W, which is for willingness. And this idea of it's going to be very hard. So, and again, I always talk about, you know, there's a part of you which is absolutely willing. And then another part of you, which is, oh, my God, but, you know, I'm working so hard at the moment. I'm going to have to work even harder or Maybe if I'm a success, then I've got to be, got to maintain it. <laughs> yeah, and, I've been you know, there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know this well, one really we well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So there's that. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then I is for identity. So this is again more of this programming that you know, our family we're very humble. For example, that's one. And of course, you know, most of them are. If they've got good and bad, you know, in them. Or, for example, I've heard this so many times, you know, I'm the first musician in my family. So you just cannot even connect. Not me. No, right. I'm saying people say that to me. So okay. that inability to connect as a saying I'm a, you know, I'm a whatever I am. Or maybe it's a photographer. Maybe it's the first time someone's, you know, right. you're taking the family in a new direction and so it's hard to so the whole identity piece is huge as well and then swi p p is possibility so mm -hmm. the whole i can't do it or i don't know how to do it and that yeah. need that we all have to know every step of the way or wish we did and and so there's that and then the last one is deserving and and i know mo lots of people go oh no i hate that i hate that word which is you know but that feeling of you know i'm not valuable maybe it's an artist or and we compare ourselves of course to other people oh my god but look at karen she's so amazing and oh i can never do something like that and i and i can't even and i want to bring this into you know i don't know my purpose or i don't know my voice particularly and um you know i think it, it's very hard for us to yeah find what our purpose is and, and and recognize that we have our own voice um yeah and Cameron you're putting you know we're all amazing in our own ways and yeah I totally agree but I swear to you back in when I before I did all this tapping it wasn't a part of my inner dialogue that you know to say oh I'm awesome or I'm amazing was kind of oh really you know I hate to say this you know in a but it sounded very American to me, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. As a British person, you don't say that yeah. kind of thing, you know. So, right. And I'm sure there's plenty of people in America who don't either, you know. No, I think you're. I think you're right because I think that's. I think thing too. Mm -hmm. I don't know for nationality, but you know, countries or personas have their persona, you know, and that's yeah. kind of yeah, and culture how we're known. And, and and I mean, even finding when you when you do, we are deserving and you are worth it and you are amazing. There's even different ways to wrap your head around that because some people take it in a really egotistical way. Some people take it as they're singing, you know, the they're fulfilling their, their purpose as, you know, a, a creation of the creator. And so, you know, it isn't personal in that sense. You know, there's all it's it's all over the board. But I do think artificially holding oneself back because you know tall poppy and all, and the training that we have and you're not special or whatever is yeah, also really unfair yeah. and wrong and living to be less than i know i had a lot of programming like that in my family because you know dynamics were such that you, you don't want to be better than this person because this person gets so triggered then they make yes. your life a living yes. hell you'll, you'll upset your sister or whatever it is so, right yeah. yeah and so mm -hmm. uh yeah so it's a real challenge just to be who you are yeah yeah and so yeah and and or even know who you are you know i, I right. think it's it's really takes a while mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely a process yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i yes. love it so eft plays a big role in 
allowing us to bring ourselves forward in response to all these, I don't want to, I don't know, are they blockages? Would you call them blockages? I don't, I don't I, know. I usually call them resistance. You know, right. And yes, in, they they show up as blockages because they stop us from moving forward. They stop. So us talk a little forward. bit about EFT, what it is, yes. and then how you uh, tapped your way into it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, that's the great thing about, you know, EFT is also known as t- tapping. And so you can say, yes, tapping into this, that, and the other, you know, we can use I'm going to dance in my background. I, I love that because I always imagine yeah. You mentioned tap dancers. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, as I say, I got to this point in my life when I was doing a lot of teaching. I I remember one day, a day from hell, and I had back-to-back classes, you know, about eight students, one after the other. It was a Thursday, I remember. And every single student of that day came in and said, oh, I didn't have time to practice this week. Ugh. And it was like the most frustrating. Ugh, and it was just, and, and I remember just sitting there and just going, I have to get out of here. There's, you know, I might end up murdering one of these children, you know, or and probably wouldn't have gone down well, definitely not with their, well, who knows, you know, with their parents. No, no, you can't go around doing that kind of thing. Not recommendable. So um, <laughs> I was searching desperately, for, you know, I want to get out. I want to do more performing. But I had all these beliefs, you know, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not good enough. Um, and I discovered it online. I discovered it on YouTube. Um, I'd been doing quite a lot of kind of affirmations and positive things and a bit of law of attraction, kind of woo-woo stuff. Um, and I, one thing I had a problem with that, and I have a, I, not so much now, but the whole positive thinking, and I think of myself as a very positive person, but affirmations and positive thinking just made me angry. Me it too. Me really oh my mad. God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, wasn't gonna I say mean, you know, cause... saying, yeah, no, it drives me, it drives me mad, you know, and you just say, and, and it just instantly triggers my back talk, you know, I sort of say, I'm a, a, a successful violinist playing in the Royal Albert Hall, for example. And then I right. would think, yeah, like hell right. or I wish or, you know, all the back chat. Mm. Mm-hmm. I had my, and, one, my voice mentor who taught me, you know, like the, the system that I use for, you know, breaking through and whatnot. She said, she told me affirmations don't work because when you say them, if you're, you're like system or, you know, your inner self, whatever, isn't in agreement with it. Like I am amazing, whatever, whatever the affirmation is. And if the inner part of you has an issue with that, all you're doing is crystallizing it, making it even more. And so you can make yourself worse. Yeah. Yeah. And there are ways of getting around that. And I'm sure you know this, you know, this words like, I love to add in, I choose you know, I choose to, or I'm ready to start, you know, and so you can soften it, but yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so Mm -hmm. I got into a kind of rage um, with all of this, (laughs) and I saw on on YouTube this tapping video, and basically what's happening is you're talking um, and you're tapping around acupressure points. So it's kind of like the points that we use in, or they use in uh, acupuncture, um, but in basic, what we call basic EFT, we just use nine points and they're kind of on your, there's, we start on the side of the hand and there's right. points on your face and on your body. Um, I'm so used to it now that I can just talk and tap in public, you know, and, and without any, the, but I have to say the first five years I was working with a coach online and I didn't even tell my husband what I was doing you know this was kind of he thought I was just having therapy or something like that and I was sitting here tapping away sort of thing and so and then I had to to come out of my tapping closet was kind of I wrote a book about it and then I said to my husband right read this you'll know what I've been doing wow so, that's yeah, that's potent here crazy. I wrote a book read it and, and yeah really <laughs> my twin sister as well she was also kind of this was a bit too woo woo for her but um, anyway so what we're doing I'm going to throw this in here because we just had a comment in the chat which is um oh and by the way we have a chat here in the zoom so anybody who's not a subscriber of for me go just go to one of my websites and join in and you can be in here too uh because this is like what I love to do with my um my peeps 
So somebody wrote, so Patrick writes, tapping into the creative emotional is difficult to put aside my rational, logical. And I find that to be so common and so usual. That's just about what you're ready to address. And I love that because this is a huge, huge stumbling block for so many people in photography. Yeah. Yeah, and and music and all and all the rest. Mm. Yeah, it's all bypassing it, yeah. the the conscious mind and allowing right. ourselves to to access the subconscious and you know which knows what we can do and knows mm. our potential and everything. So, yeah, I mean, as we're tapping on the points, and I will show you, and I'd love Karen, I'd love to do a quick tapping round. I sort of kind of prepared about about our purpose if we you know if we have time for it, yeah, um, so that people get a get a feeling feeling for it um as we're tapping on the points we're talking about what is coming coming up for us so if, imagine it's um well you talked about the anxiety you know or or in the chat you know well no let's stay with this you know or the if you said to yourself i don't know what my purpose is and that for some people, and it's a negative statement. Now, some people will say, no, that's not true at all. I know exactly what my purpose is. And then so they would be at a one maybe or a zero. Okay. But plenty of people out there who would be, you know, yeah, I'm still not clear. You know, it's, I'm at a six or seven and we rate it like this. And so then we use those words. And when I work with someone one-to-one, I ask them a few, you know, how does that feel? What's the emotions? How, how do you feel it in your body and everything? And then we use the words that are coming up and we stay with the negative for as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. And basically my idea is it's really about acknowledging that we have uh, these negative emotions. And the thing about EFT though, is that it's all, it's, it's not just mental. It's, it's, um, how, what do you, I have a term for it, but you use a term because it's, it's mind, body, spirit, I think you said, but it's both. It's like you get the body and the neurological system involved absolutely. because if you don't. Absolutely. All, the, yeah. all the, that stuff is baked into you. So Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, while we're talking and we're saying mm -hmm. these horrible negative things, and sometimes they're really horrible, and we often, you know, can use quite strong language. I won't today, but, you know, we, when I'm working one-to-one -one with people. And we're saying things out loud, and sometimes people say to me, I haven't said that out loud ever, maybe, you know, sort of maybe wow. acknowledging on the stage fright or something. But right. while we're doing it, we're tapping around these points. And this has been seen, and they've done more than 100 um, evidence-based studies to show that this brings down stress. It brings down the stress hormone cortisol, and it basically starts to rewire those parts of the brain which have to do with the fight or flight reaction to have huh. to do with those those um so because sometimes people say to me oh it's you know it's just the words um you know and or is it just the words and I compare the two situations imagine we're just chatting and something has really has upset you and we're just talking and we talk and we talk and we say it by the end of that conversation chances are yeah, there's a little bit of relief and sharing and everything, but it doesn't solve anything. Whereas I find time and time again with and, you know, other EFT practitioners, they say the same thing and, and it seemed to, to actually have an effect. You get this kind of detachment from the emotional, so from the emotions. So the triggers, if you when you think of that situation, maybe you feel sadness or anger, or whatever it is, they kind of. It's not that you don't feel any emotions anymore, but it's not like a knee jerk reaction. Right. Anymore. It doesn't trigger yeah. you into this whole heightened Absolute. cortisol Absolutely. Absolutely. avalanche. Absolutely. So when mm -hmm. you get into another situation which can is similar, you know, or it could be the same or similar, you're not going to get that sub subconscious right. triggering. And so you can, you know, access your the front of your brain, you can behave in a more rational, logical calm way and um so they're both things are having the effect at the same time we're, we're just, talking we're acknowledging and we're tapping yeah so i want to i just want to throw in a practical application for something like this in photography sure. one of yeah. so you know i led my my artist voice retreats right and so one of the yeah. things that would happen is i would go through we you know we have a process we do um and then what 
well, two things just hit my mind at the same time. So what would happen is we're in these amazing places, right? So we'd get all like, oh, get all grounded. And then you walk out and then all of a sudden there's just, oh my God, I'm really in Venice. Oh my God, look at, you know, the sights and the smells and the, oh, look at the light. And, and it really hits you and it's overwhelming to your senses. So then you got to, you know, tap or go back to the, you know, breathing or whatever it is that you do that would be an application for tapping. So if you do find yourself blindsided by something that triggers you into, yeah. you can tap yeah. your way back, you can. get yourself yeah. back in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the guy who invented or, or kind of formalized tapping because there'd been other tap, there's a thing called TFT, which is thought field therapy, which also used tapping on these. Basically, they, they're, you know, on the meridians, the Chinese medicine system. Mm -hmm. um, that was just you diagnosed, okay, this is a fear in, in my stomach. Okay, I'm going to tap here, which is connected to the stomach meridian. And then, and then this guy, Gary Cray, came along in the 90s. He said, well, you know what, we've got these nine different points which we're using. So let's just go round and round. So it makes it very, very easy to remember it. And he also, his catchphrase was try it on, on anything. So I, you know, you, because of the way it's structured, you can use anything. So what your example you've just used just then, Karen, you know, this, uh, what we would do, we start on the side of the hand, we start tapping and we use what we call the setup phrase, which is even though, so we would say, even though I'm overwhelmed right now, right. for example. So, so even though I'm over, you guys I'm tap. overwhelmed. I, you, well, you, well, well, I'm I'll just saying my, my people, so. my people oh, here in this. Things. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Like, tap, but tap, yeah, tap. So Let's even do it. I'm overwhelmed or it could be even though I'm feeling really anxious about this performance or even though I'm such a lousy photographer or even though I messed up that shoot or whatever it is you know mm -hmm. you can just use the words that are coming to mind and we start and then what we do we add to that negative um phrase which is what we call our issue at that moment we add a positive phrase which is something like i love and accept myself completely mm -hmm. or it's safe to be me or i'm okay with who i am so it's kind of juxtaposing that negative what it is right. with self acceptance self love and it, as you know, uh, I'll get into the technique, the technique of it, Douglas, he's asking, does it matter left or right? Yeah. When we tap, basically, we use one hand, tap against the side of the other hand. You can switch it up. Some people even do it like that. Basically, there's a point here, which is quite near the base of the little finger. They use, they call this the side of the hand or the karate chop. So you're, you're tapping there. And we start here, exactly, yeah. And, and we start... <laughs> even though issue, I love yeah. and accept myself completely, all right? And and I've had clients who really struggle with saying, I love and accept myself completely, and we kind of soften it a bit and then keep on insisting. But it, uh, And then we start going around the points. So the points we're going to be using are the inside of the eyebrow. So it, it's kind of, and it could be either side. Some people tap with both hands or one or the other, and it doesn't matter. It's not like yoga that you have to kind of balance the sides. There are these meridians running down both sides of the body. So we tap there. Then the next one is the side of the eye and then under the eye. So on the bone right below the pupil. Sinuses. Um, the, what I would say to that, Patrick, is, is um, if you have a point, which is if you imagine you are suffering from sinus pain and everything, you can absolutely tap where it is. Some people find that actually comforting. It's a bit or you can just massage or you can skip that point. You know, there's there's no hard and fast. It's not like playing the violin that it has to be <laughs> in place. You know, it, it's pretty forgiving, this technique. All right. So. The next one is under the nose that point there then we have under the mouth so in the cleft of the chin then we have the collarbone which is if you go out from the middle to the collarbones right below the inner end of the collarbones there's a dent and if you're tapping there you'll find these points here and then there are two more these ones are a little bit more there's one under the arm about four inches below the armpit and you tap there it might be a little bit sensitive 
And these are ones that, you know, you may not, if you're going, I tap when I walk around Madrid, for example, and I don't tend to go around doing <laughs> this, you know, I'm a, a little bit more discreet, but, you know, or I skip that one and I'm, and the top of the head can also be a little bit, you know, monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. So, you know, discretion. <laughs> okay. So those are our nine tapping points and you'll see, and it would be great to do a tapping round if you're up for it. Let's do it. Let's just, do it. Just a quick one. I kind of yeah, yeah. wrote a, a little script about, you know, purpose. And what I tend to do in what they call clinical EFT, and EFT has now been, I think I told you the other day, Karen, that it's been approved by the American Veterans Association for use with PTSD, with post-traumatic stress disorder, because that is has been something which is very hard to treat right. but they've seen that that with tapping it can really it's very effective and they do trials they've done a lot of trials with veterans and they see that nine six months afterwards they're still the ptsd is gone that's powerful it that's is it's really it's powerful super powerful you mm -hmm. know and i have to say you know in america the other thing nurses and doctors they can get credits for training in this you know it has been really? accepted to to that extent in by western medicine which is exciting you know and it's because um they they i would say you know there's one a doctor dr dawson church who in fact one of the trainings i did he was the, he was my mentor on it he has done a lot of research into the scientific effects. So it's, it used to be just kind of, oh, this is amazing. You must do it. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, so God, woo woo nonsense sort of thing. But now they're seeing that it actually does have an effect on the brain. Yeah. On the, on the body. It's nice to have a little so, science to lean on, even though, you know, it absolutely. works, it's worked forever. Yeah. And you, you know, it's like, duh, but then it's like, yeah, me, no. you know, everybody used to say I was woo woo. And now I'm like, um, it's actually quantum physics. So try yeah, to there we up. go. Yeah. <laughs> try to keep that yes thank you einstein yeah okay so um of what we're gonna do if if it feels all right for everyone and i'm aware of the time i don't want to take long but we'll just do a quick five minute round if yeah you want. and yeah. if it feels all right for everyone i don't know either here everyone here which is great or on even on the live just if you can just to close your eyes if that feels okay or just if it's not you know it doesn't feel good just just let your eyes rest down. And just, I want you to say again, if you can out loud, just say that sentence, I don't know my purpose. You want me to say that? Yeah, why not? Okay, I'll, I'll be the model. Okay. Be the model, all right. Okay, I don't know my purpose. All right, and just feel into that statement for you right now. And this is you know, to everyone right now. And, you know, it could be, you could be, absolutely I know and you're firing away on all cylinders or it could be that yeah no I do have doubts I'm not quite sure what I'm up to and everything so allow yourself just to feel into that statement and what kind of emotions come up for you and it might be doubt it might be sadness it might be anger even or frustration so whatever or whatever emotion and maybe even in your mind as you say that sentence, you know, what, if you could rate that on a scale of one to 10, we use this kind of one being nothing at all there, 10 is, oh my God, yes, oh God, yes, this is what I'm really feeling. Just rate it for yourself. And that's just, we use it as a marker. And just whatever feelings are you coming up for you, if you can feel those in your body, and sometimes it's easy for people to feel them in your body. If it's not, just imagine. If I could feel this sadness, where would I feel it? If I could feel this anxiety, where would it be? Okay, and when you're ready, just take another deep breath in and let it go. And you can open your eyes and I'm going to tap. And Karen, are you okay to be my echo voice? I'll be your echo voice. Thank you. All right. So what we're doing is if everyone wants to tap with us, it'd be great. I will say a sentence. I'll view some of the sentences. Well, I kind of wrote a script. Normally I would use sentences that people have fed me, but I, for time's sake and everything, I just sort of thought this would be. It. And we're going to go, oh, yeah, sorry, I started a sentence before and I didn't never finished it. Yeah, in clinical EFT, they just stay in the negative. They just go, 
you know, this anxiety, this anxiety, this anxiety, a lot of repetition. <laughs> so you really it, feel that anxiety. <laughs> yeah, really. And then you're tapping and then you maybe start at a 10, then you go to an eight, then maybe you go to a seven, then maybe you go to a three. And then, you know, the, the goal is to get down to about a two or something. And then they go, all right, bye, see you, you know, kind of thing. I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. In coaching, very often, and there's a positive, we add in a few positive mindset uh, reframing at the end. So I'll do that. All right. So we end up in a good mood. That's an, I like that. Let's end up in a good <laughs> mood. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go with this. And I'm going with that phrase and for you just decide how true this feels, but um, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do my interpretation of it. Cause you know, I'm not perfect and I have issues. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah. And each of us, our brain sort of works out, okay, how does this work for me? So that's great. And just so you know, everyone, if you, if I say something, if I say all this shame I'm feeling and you're thinking, no, I don't feel shame. Don't worry. You won't take on something which is not yours. Okay. That's a good so point. Just, yeah, because we're tapping, we're clearing your brain will go, no, it's not shame, but it is guilt because how did I get to be so lucky that I have a purpose and oh, right. my Uh, you know my little sister never whatever it is okay right it works for you all right so let's do it okay so we're starting on the side of the hand and the first time around at least I'll say the tapping points okay even though I haven't yet discovered my purpose even though I haven't yet discovered my purpose I love and accept myself completely I love and accept myself completely even though it's really hard to get clear on my purpose even though it's really hard to get clear on my purpose I love and honor myself completely. I love and honor myself completely. Even though I just don't know my purpose. Even though I just don't know my purpose. A part of me has not got that clarity. A part of me has not got that clarity. Maybe I even ask myself. Maybe I even ask myself. Who am I to have a purpose? Who am I to have a purpose? And even though I don't know my purpose yet. And even though I don't know my purpose yet, I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. All right, we're going around the points, okay? I don't know my purpose yet. I don't know my purpose yet. I'm not clear on my purpose. I'm not clear on my purpose. And it's hard to even know where to begin. And it's hard to even know where to begin. To define my purpose. To define my purpose. It's so daunting. It's so daunting. It's really overwhelming. It's really overwhelming. And I look around me. And I look around me. And it seems that other people know what their purpose is. And it seems like other people just know what their purpose is. And I feel so small and stupid. I feel so small and stupid. Because I just don't know what mine is. Because I just don't know what mine is. Mm -hmm. And as Pablo Picasso said. And as Pablo Picasso said. The meaning of life. The meaning of life. Is to find your gift. Is to find your gift. And the purpose of life. And the purpose of life. Is to give it away. Is to give it away. So I'm releasing anything. So I'm releasing anything? Yeah, that stands I'm releasing- between. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything. That stands between me and my purpose. That stands between me and my purpose. That stands between me and discovering my purpose. That's, that stands between me and discovering my purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm releasing any of those old thoughts. I'm releasing any of those old thoughts. All of those beliefs that I picked up. All of those beliefs that I picked up. All those old messages. All those old messages. About not being able to shine. About not being able to shine. About not showing off. At not showing off. Not standing out. Not standing out. I'm letting go of all of these messages. And letting go of all of these messages. Because they came from people. Because they came from people. Who were also mistaken. Who were also mistaken. And I'm healing all the old hurts and wounds. And I'm healing all the old hurts and wounds. Healing every time in my life. 
healing every time. Is that what you said? Every yeah. time and healing every time in my life. Every time that I got the message. Every time that I got the message. That I wasn't good enough to have a purpose. That I wasn't good enough to have a purpose. That somehow I was less than. That somehow I was less than. I'm healing every time. And healing every time. Mm -hmm. And I'm clearing anything in my energy system. And I'm clearing anything in my energy system. I choose to let this all go. I choose to let this all go. And I'm learning how to be happy with myself. And I'm learning how to be happy with myself. And as I do so. And as I do so. I'm discovering what brings me joy. I'm discovering what brings me joy. What fascinates and inspires me. What fascinates and inspires me. And what lights me up. And what lights me up. So I can share it with the world. So I can share it with the world. And offer inspired service. And offer inspired service. Mm -hmm. And as I do so. And as I do so. I'm allowing myself clarity. I'm allowing myself clarity. Confidence. Confidence. And a real sense of purpose. And a real sense of purpose. Okay. So just thank you, Karen. Just take a moment. Just breathe, everyone. And if it feels all right, just again, close your eyes. And just see inside if anything shifted. And sometimes just, to, you know, sometimes people immediately go, oh, my God, I feel really different. And I'm, now I'm open to, yeah, this new sense of purpose. Or sometimes other people, it's kind of, yeah, there's a little bit more distance to how I was feeling before. And maybe just opening a little bit of a window possibility. And then there are some people who, you know, it might take a little bit more time, a little bit more, those neural pathways, they're very trodden in and they need a little bit more insistence on them. So it's, it'd be interesting just to track for you. What kind of person are you or where are you right now in this? And just see how this works for you. But just taking a moment to feel into those emotions, feeling into your body, see if anything has shifted or released. Yeah, and when you're ready, just, again, you take another breath and breathe your eyes open. Yeah, and Karen, do you want to give me a little bit of feedback how that how it felt? Yeah, so I find when, um, you know, there's, so for instance, we talked about purpose. I, I, I kind of restated it inside for, you know, something related Your to that. Your purposes. That I felt. <laughs> right, my purpose, and then, you know, how successful <laughs> I'll be at it and, well, yeah, I'm nice. a Virgo, so whether I'll do it perfectly, <laughs> all, that, all that kind of thing, which I never do. We, so we can tap on perfectionism. As yeah, well, as. That's, that's, that's another week. Um, cool. So <laughs> weeks long. So anyway, my point is when those things, even if I'm not thinking about them consciously, when they're settled in, and of course, anytime I step out in public, those are those little things are going to get fired up a little bit, where oh, if yeah. I'm just sitting around, you know, in my world, it doesn't matter as much. But as soon as I, I'm stepping out in what I do, I'm going to get a little triggered. So what, when that happens, everything kind of goes, everything kind of like, what is that? Freezes, gets a little, so doing yeah, this. I think of the word contract. Contract, contract right. Yeah. And it's as like, opposed it's like to expansive, you know, right. contracting. Yeah. And it doesn't, mm. it doesn't mess me Energy. up. Like I can't function because I know how to, how to move through those things. And, and, and it's only by doing the things that you actually start really feeling better, but this is a doing thing too. So I do feel better. And I also feel oh, everything kind of is moving. I can feel the energy moving now nice. through here. Mm. And, mm. um, and it's, uh, my eyes feel more relaxed and those are all good indicators to me that I'm absolutely more, more present. Yeah. Mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was just a little tiny, taste tiny, of, you know, <laughs> of how it is, but um, yeah. Interestingly. Mm. Um, okay. Oh, this is a good question. I just want yeah, to make one, 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 like one quick mm -hmm. comment and then I'll, then I'll state this question. The quick comment mm -hmm. is when you and I talked the other day, we did a longer session and I didn't yeah. think much about it, but then like, I don't know, a couple of days later, you said, just curious, did you notice anything? And I'm like, well, let's see this morning I was up till four 
because I had so much energy and a lot to do. So I figured I might as well do it. And then a friend of mine in Australia was helping me do some of it. And she was up anyway. So we were like, I was up till four, just la 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 la. And then I got up at eight. I mean, I went to sleep. That's and I got up at eight and just get one all day, stayed yeah. up till midnight or one and a lot of yeah. energy. So yeah. now, and, and you are, uh, this is what I found when, well, and I find with many of my, you know, the people I'm working with, but when I was working with a coach, I would, and you say, you know, we have to kind of just push through and, and I, absolutely, you know, at some level, it is just sort of, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway and everything. But I always now add, you know, feel the fear, tap it away as much as possible and then you'll find you can do it so much easier. And, yeah. you know, this, you asked. That was what I was recordings. trying to say, because my process yeah. does that too. And yeah. tapping does it in a whole different it way. Does. Which is a whole so different way, which is wonderful to have all these different tools. You know, as you totally. said, you know, you asked if I'd had a recording. And I remember when I was working with my coach and he said, uh, but you're a violinist, why don't you have a CD? And I kind of, you know, really, you must be kidding. You know, there's so many amazing, incredible violinists out there who would want to hear from me kind of thing. But then, you know, it was a kind of, well, you know, I've got this violin and guitar duo and I love playing. We have all this repertoire. And, in, and we ended up making two CDs, which I honestly, at the time, it was a kind of never Never, ever in my right. life will I have it. But, you know, I did it. And it was a real feeling or, you know, moving and I got a contract with an orchestra or I I um, wrote a book and things, you know, and it was always, it's not, I'm not trying to brag and say, oh, look at me, everybody, I'm just amazing. <laughs> no way. It right. was, I have so much resistance and I have so much belief of there's no way. And then we tapped and removed it and it was a kind of, oh, okay, I can do that. Yeah. You know. So, you know, it, it, it's, and this, what you're saying, and we very often, we don't tie the two together, but it's interesting right. to notice, you know, after mm -hmm. tapping session. And there so, are different things, you know, that come up. Exactly. So you can be tired, you can be, but, it, you know, you clear the energy, things start to move. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, the question is asked here in the chat, how does this fit in with mindfulness? Yeah, that's a great question. I love that. I find, you know, all of these things, mindfulness, meditation, even EFT, I think for me, it's being very much in the moment, you know, this whole power of now. I, um, this awareness that you have as you're going through, of, you know, your body, your emotions, those feelings, I think for many of us, our feelings are so suppressed, you know, and, and, and not, Sometimes, of course, we need to. We can't be constantly sort of bursting into tears or anything, but or, or yelling and shouting. But um, they, we become much more aware, and we become very much in the moment. Um, mindful, which is the only place any of our art manifests. By the way, you don't imagine f photography happening in the future or the past i mean you can but that will not result in an image <laughs> you have to do it now that's right that's right and the same with obviously with performing on, on mm. a musical instrument yeah there's all we've of course got recordings and with you it's a, a photo and everything but the actual act of creation yeah it's in the moment but i don't know about you when i'm performing so often my mind is in the past or in the future, the future. or yeah you know it's either and then the your body goes ah i can't yeah, go those places <laughs> and, and I was sort of, I go with two things. One is, will I actually do the thing? But the second thing is, will I actually enjoy doing the thing? Right. Because we can muscle through and we can actually get ourselves to do something, but not actually have a very nice time with it, you know. And so for me, that's important too. You know, yeah. the more we can do that, the happier we are, the and the more we discover our purpose to get back to that. And everything. Yeah. So it's a whole different way to become more mindful and more present yeah, in, in one's body. And then there was and, a question and, of yeah. what about mm. results with people who are stressed out because of physical pain? Yeah, absolutely. You can, you know, this whole triad on another thing. I was a couple of days ago, I was working with someone who's she's got it's tennis elbow. I mean, she's a violinist, but it's or golf elbow. I don't know which one, which one it is. And so we tapped and you can tap on. They have this thing in EFT called chasing the pain, which is really interesting. So you mm. might find that you. I don't know, you're tapping on, even though I have this pain in my left elbow, and then you tap on the actual pain. And, you know, and remember the mind body connection, bringing down the stress, but then you can also tap on the emotions, you know, for her, it was, is this going to ruin my career? 
and right. all of that sense of loss or fear and everything coming up so there's a lot there and and you know so um i mean i always say please don't give up on western medicine you know if you break your arm don't just try and tap it away you know yeah. so <laughs> please go to the doctor <laughs> Yeah, you know, so it's not a either or, but it's certainly, and you know, when given how much our mind, the mind body connection, it's not something I think most people accept nowadays. I don't mean they used to, but well, they didn't. But now the mind body connection is so clear, right? That it's kind of clear that we can see, and then the emotional thing as well. You know, allowing they say about emotions, emotions in motion are fine. The problem is when emotions get stuck. Right. And and, you know, when you think of a toddler having a mega tantrum, they get through it. They run off and play, leaving their parents as basket cases because we can't <laughs> do the same kind of thing. The kid's fine. Uh, yeah, the kid's fine. He's moving. I'm off. I'm off. Bye, mum and dad. You know, and, and we, we're left kind of stuck with this, you know, probably have a fight with your spouse afterwards or whatever it is. But, you know, and so that idea of you know being really in the emotion but in a safe way I'm not saying it's not like you know anger therapy ringing your ex and having a furious you know sort of I've got enclosure you're an absolute you know whatever you are (laughs) yeah no we we do it in a safe way and other things so oh that's so so good I mean I just yeah it's an adjunct to western medicine absolutely they complement each other they absolutely do yeah yeah and when Mm -hmm. it comes to the creative process and you know, being in the creative flow and creating work that is more aligned, more ease, not only more aligned, but also more easily aligned with your vision, your feeling, your, you know, what it is you really truly want to say and create. It makes you, it helps you in our case, helps you see different and think different thoughts. I also wanted to point something out really interesting, which may sound like, that's weird, Karen. Why do you know that? And I'm like, I know a lot of things that people would wonder where, why I know it, but you know, there's um, in the, in the darker sides of things, there's something, uh, you know, mind control. And um, I don't want to say the actual thing, but there, there have been a lot of dark experiments with, you know, mind control and mass mind control and so on and so yeah. forth. And one of the yeah. things that, that happens there is, that, and it's trauma based. Um, and then one of the things that happens is then you're sort of like programmed to behave and say and do things that aren't that you're not in control of. And that the way out, my point is, you know, there is that and it, it has a whole <clears throat> history. But the way out, I learned, I learned this recently was so if, if as the person who leaves that world steps into more of like a normal world, they're going to have feelings that come up. And as they come up, they're going to be overwhelming. And that the way through it is to write them. But if you're going to write it and write what the feeling is in detail and had to do with writing because the right, the, the actual action of moving the, the physical, pen, again, it's the mind, body it's the thing. physical yeah. thing. Yeah. And so you, and yeah. it's, so it parallels this so perfectly because you're right. They write the feeling and then they write the solution. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, from one and, it, to the and the solution yeah. may evolve. It doesn't have to be the perfect solution, but it's like exactly what you're talking about. So in a it's sense, so this is like a deprogramming um, yeah. looked at from a different point of view, which totally, I find fascinating. Totally. It's like there's, there's one, there's one, in a, you know, you're saying, you know, writing it down. Yes. You're actually writing what is right. And then finding, as you say, finding a solution and yes, journaling perfect perfect example and so absolutely yeah, it's okay one thing that's what a lot of people yeah. write journals but a lot of people absolutely. just write but, but you got to write the solution not just uh, the, uh yep yeah or the, uh, the, sometimes it can be hard to to get to the solution and that's when you know working with someone else who hasn't doesn't have your same uh it's not even your same filters, should we say, or you're saying, you know, it's a part of us trying to keep ourselves safe all the time. You know, my, my EFT coach always used to say, and still says, uh, self-sabotage is misguided self-love. And it's that part of you trying to keep you safe. And it's, you know, from right. what we learn, we know and everything. Um, what there's a great, on the same line, uh, um, I don't know if you saw the, you know, the Mr. Rogers film, it was a, year or so ago you know the a beautiful 
day in the neighborhood. Oh, it's a beautiful life yeah. or it's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, wasn't it? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, so, yeah. I saw it, it, I was in the middle of COVID, but I had to go back to England for a funeral and uh, I watched it on the plane going over there and then on the plane coming back because it was so amazing. And he said at one point, he said to someone, the mentionable is manageable. And that I just, you know, jumped on that. And I went, oh, my God, that is exactly what we do with yes. EFT. Yes. The fact that you can say it out loud, even in front of someone else, you know, which is really huge. But even on your own, if you're tapping on your own, the mentionable is manageable. And it takes away that's, you know, I can't say that, you know, sort of thing. So, so would you say, I mean, just kind of wrapping up the conversation, but bringing it back to the point we started about about purpose, I, I often... I always enjoy meeting people who, you know, like you're a violinist. That's what you love. That's your, that's part of kind of not all of who you are, but it's part of who you are. My husband's a jazz musician. So I understand that, that piece. Mm -hmm. And, and then, but you found EFT and you're a coach and you're, you're, this has become part of your purpose as well. Um, Is it because of the freedom that you feel it gives people and you feel like that's part of your purpose? Like, how does that all tie together for you? I think because, and and I think this is true for very many people, the fact that, you know, we find our purpose through the struggles we've had ourselves and the solutions we found to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it really was with EFT, uh, you know, this helped me so much. And so then getting to the point of, you know, I want to help. It wasn't instant, but, you know, I want to help other people. So, you mm-hmm. know, I kind of worked with my coach for about five years. And I remember someone once saying to me, you yeah, that screwed up. And I said, oh, well, no, but I just enjoyed the process. And it was, you know, it was great. So, yeah. So for me, it, it all ties in together. I couldn't have one without the other. Having said that, also EFT, it's kind of easier for me than the violin so I don't have quite as much um self-judgment around it I mean you know I'm still a work in progress uh, where and so we are and yeah and I love I love working with people I love the directness of this seeing results with people you know as a violinist you talked about the ego and everything I think for me it was very much for me I mean, I know other people were allowed to listen from time to time <laughs> if they wanted, but, you know, maybe even enjoyed it. But it was all about it was more about me, whereas EFT, it's very much about sharing this technique and, and right. helping. It's it's so it's fascinating, too. You hear yeah. a lot of great stories, you know, <laughs> it's right. So definitely I would say both. You know, I couldn't be doing this without having done the other. And I think that's and I wouldn't have discovered it without the other. That's so, so interesting. I just, I just love the paths that yeah, um, it's fun. creative mm-hmm. people find the journeys they find themselves on the solutions they find, and then bringing it to the world. I think it's so important because yeah. it's like a lot of people feel like, Oh, I'm not that good. And I don't really have a purpose. And I'm like, you know what? We're all waiting for the gift that you are and the gift that you have um, so that we can enjoy it too, for you to bring it so that it, it can enrich us too. And I feel yeah that way about you. And I feel so much, I don't know, it's, it sounds so goofy, but I just feel so much richer and fuller for having met you even only oh, recently. And I feel yeah, like me too with you. I feel yeah, really close, you know, really close to you. And like, I've known you for a long time and I'm just yeah. really grateful that you are willing to, that you're, you're doing this in your world, but that you were willing to bring it into ours. Because, oh, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah no, and I love to, it, it opened a whole, as I said, it opened a whole new way of thinking for me. I said, Oh, never thought of photography in that way before and yeah of course you know so so thank you so much yeah you're welcome it legitimizes what I'm talking about all the time I'm always yammering I I, I yammering Katie, you know, she, you, yeah, when was, Katie was, I was there. I was, yeah, yeah, when Katie, yeah. so Katie Crooks, who was, yeah. who came and talked to us, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they worked, you know, this all is that circle. They all, they all know each other. Anyway, she said, um, now I've lost my point. I hate it when I do that. Uh, that's one of my, one of my issues, but I just, I just love the, the full circle and the overlapping, you know, edges of circles and, and how we can each bring it to each other, other's worlds. Oh, I know what I was going to say is, um, and a lot of my people have heard this, how people often say, used to say about me, oh, she's a good, really good photographer, a little woo woo, but a good <laughs> photographer. And I'm like, dude, you as a you're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you so, so much for bringing this to us. I have a feeling uh, 
We're going to be doing more of this somewhere along the way. I'm going to kind of muse upon it. And um, I think it's really important, really important. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, and thank, thank you, you all, everyone, everybody. And all the great comments. Yeah, thank you really... for everybody who's here in the Zoom with me. And again, remember, if you want to join my uh, subscription list, my insiders are, are who I bring with me on, on these journeys. And <laughs> they get to see me geek out uh, behind the scenes <laughs> and some of the mistakes I make, which are numerous uh, at times. And I want to thank all of you out there in the world. And I know really, I think I'll, I'll do this well. I'll oh, let that go. Let that go. No, I'm not perfect. I know I'm a Virgo. <laughs> oh, it's gotta be so perfect. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I hope you enjoy tell uh, everybody, Jenny, where to find you, where they can find you and learn even more about tapping. Yeah, um, my website is in a, a better life tapping a better life tapping all in a long stream but I'll if put you put that in the Google, description you know, or and on facebook i'm jenny cliff coaching i if you put get jenny cliff Co coaching my i have a youtube channel as well with quite a lot of tapping rounds and everything oh, there yes. and yeah and so all of those places and you know even emailing me is easy if you know my name because it's jenny at jenny Di uh, thank you cameron that's brilliant and um jenny at jenny cliff.com so if you know my Perfect. name it's easy if you don't it's impossible yeah. So I encourage yeah. you to follow up and learn more and go for it and live Yay. the life of your dreams. Yeah. That's a nice <sighs> thought, isn't it? I know I feel Yay. better now. Thank you. <laughs> cool. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you next Thanks, time. Karen. And to everyone out there. Thank you. Thank you.